I remember um, once having Gamo out. I don't know if it was out of the blue. or once out of the blue, but he 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 he, he made a point of discussing something that Gamel told him once. He says, "What you want to be in your in, in in painting is you want to be. I mean, in, in your career as a painter, you want to be able to hang out a sign." And that says painter, and it means you can do whatever is required. And uh, it's an interesting world that we're in uh, right now, this world, you know, the world of art schools and art this and art that and art sort of everything. And it keeps coming up um, in various ways. But uh, Liz, oh, and before I go any further, I just want to thank David. That's a, David, the second D, David. <laughs> I hope you know who you are. Uh, if you want me to put your whole name out there, I'll be happy to do that. Uh, thank you, David, for your nice contribution. Uh, I think I was supposed to announce it, the last one, but it, so this is not real old, but it's anyway. Uh, but thank you, uh, thank you for that, and that's a it's a multiple, so I really appreciate it. Um, and so talking about um, the difference between oh, so 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 painter artist, painter artist, right? And uh, it's one of the funniest things. Um, but let me just put the question to you. Uh, Liz asked it of, of me. Liz is presently a student of mine with um, um, uh, um, what shall I say, a fair amount of background and a lot of potential and, and, uh, and she's a hard worker and all the rest of those things and uh, pays attention to the, these thoughts. So I, I heard another painter, she said online, talking about the difference between a painter and an artist. Would you mind weighing in? <coughs> And um, my first reaction was, I'm hard pressed to weigh in. First of all, I know the painter you're talking about. I don't know the statement he made. And actually, it's probably better if I if I don't even talk about him, mention him. Uh, and I'll tell you a reason for that. I mean, one of the things that might be amusing would be to have every painter you know an answer the question: What's the difference between a painter and an artist? Um, and um, because uh, uh, I have a feeling, if we aren't you know, hearing somebody else say something first, we're going to say something so uniquely different. And uh, so I'm glad I don't know what he actually said. I, based on what what extra comments she made, I think I can guess, but um, I never saw the quote. Uh, but it's another painter online. So, um, yeah, so this question comes up persistently, and I know that in the history of my reading, um, uh, painters, Degas, uh, Ang, anybody you talk about, anybody you, who's spoken, whose words are being quoted, they'll use those words intermittently, interchangeably. What's the difference between an artist and a painter? And, um, you know, and, you know, Gamble used to come up to a student, to, if there's some, some young person who was aspiring, he would ask him how art was in a very uh, sort of a, <laughs> I don't know, condescending kind of a way. But it was also trying to say something, it was saying something, at least to us, about this romantic pursuit of something, you know, and, uh, and then the artiste mindset and all that sort of thing. But, um, but what is the difference between, if any, between a painter and an artist, right? So um, the, the first things that come to mind uh, are, uh, you know, just, just to think about it for a second, you know, when, when people are writing you know, and you're reading stuff, typically it'll say, oh, you know, it would, it would make a list of, of art forms, and one of them will be a, a singer or, or, sorry, a composer, a, mu a musician. Another one will be a writer, and a third one will be an artist, right? Well, you know, we now come to a place where everybody's an artist, right? So you're a, you're a, you're a um, you know, anything you do well, you know, you're a basketball artist, you know, whatever it is. So who knows what that means? But does it mean you're just good at what you do, you know, or does it mean you just strive to be good? I mean, it's an interesting idea that your this measure thing can happen. But um, but if you don't say that, what the word artist has typically meant was painter, and uh, because sculptor would be sculptor and painter would be artist. This is not an unusual thing for people to break down this way. And I'm just talking about painters talking casually mostly. So. Um, you know, so when you're reading, and I'll show you some quotes, uh, that's all I mean to do is just show you a few quotes and some interesting uh, uses of the word. But my sense of it, though, is that you can talk about artist and painter in one way, and that is that every painter who's really skilled in his field is obviously trying to create something that, that, that elevates, right, that actually gets to that place of being an elevated 
uh, thing, right? Really, really good. And I think most people probably mean art when they say that. Now, you could say, you know, really, really good. Does that mean realism? Uh, you know, mechanical skills. Uh, well, you'll, you'd find, you'd be hard pressed to find any painters in the past who didn't say, yeah, that is a big piece of what it is. But nobody's ever assumed that's all it is, right? There's this element of, uh, you know, Ang would be talking constantly about truth and beauty. And uh, you wouldn't hear him talking about realism as the be all and end all, truth, 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 just get it accurate or something like that. And so, you know, and, and perhaps the response of this other person was a warning to, you know, to the realist student who just thinks if you noodle it all up and don't. But so what do you have to have in addition to that noodling up? Well, you do have to have those skills. You want those skills. And a, a good painter, a good artist, has painting skills. So uh, he's good at what he does. That's the, first, that's the first measure of whether he's any good. But somebody else would say then the measure of whether he's any good is whether he's an artist, whether he has artistry or... Uh, whatever those kinds of interesting things are. And I think some of the things, some of the quotes I show you will give you some sense of that. It's certainly every painter's ambition to produce something that you could call art, you know. Uh, whether you succeed at it, I like that comment from Pleisner who says, you know, you work hard to do the best you can and every once in a while, if you really, if you really elevate your, um, you know, if you really sort of live on a good, solid uh, average, you know, if you're a good painter, uh, every once in a while you produce a masterpiece, and I think a lot of times that's what we mean by... But I think that, so you see the masterpiece is just a greatness in your form, right? Really, really doing it well. Uh, that thing you're trying to achieve, really beginning to a, 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 approach it. And the other one is artistry, which is, you know, it, it's, it, it becomes a little banal. You know, what, what's the meaning of artistry? So, uh, you know, is there a meaning? So we're talking about mastery and masterpieces, and then this thing called artistry. So what is that, right? And I don't think it's uh, uh, necessarily a low thing. I think it's just, you might be wise to think about what you mean by it. You know, what we all are thinking is, is that there's this thing we apply called art or artsiness or something like that. And then all of a sudden, you know, it's just good. Whether it's good or not, it's got artsiness in it. And, um, but, so if you can just say artistry is actually high skill, and that's, I think, what most people mean in music or something like that. And, um, and then, uh, but in addition to that, has another component, um, and that is that is something that elevates it, right? And that's where you get to this interesting quote I have here, um, uh, Stevens. He says, "Painting is nature seen through an emotion." So painting, painting. He doesn't say artistry is nature seen through the prism of emotion. So here again, you see that he's not separating the word painter from artist. He's saying the painting, that painting, that this thing called painting, is nature seen through the prism of an emotion. So it's, an, the, the artistry typically is that thing that people are looking for, that ex self-expression, that expression of a, of a, for example, of an impressionist, that, that sense of the beauty of it. You actually, you actually begin to achieve it and it begins to come across. You know, that, the unity of that fantastic vision you rather, rather have, I guess I could say, of the, uh, of that, of the, of the big impression. Am I staying good here, uh, Mr. Producer? Um, but uh, so let's look at what Cox says here. And, and, and these things are just a little bit random. I had a whole pile of pile pop on. I lost it, actually, but I had to get this done. Uh, and it's probably just mercy to you that I did lose it. Drawing is a great expressional art and deals with beauty and significance, not with mere fact. Now, this is, these are a couple here. What might be the responses to the realist? And every student out there, remember, you can call yourself a realist all day long, but what you're, what you're trying to do is, is be good at making a likeness, you know, be good at mastering the truth in front of you uh, as, a, as a first base. But in the end, Cox says, we're not interested in mere fact, right? There's, a, there's an expressional aspect to this. Does that mean you live in a distortion that you actually sit there and try to deform things the way, you know, um, a, a Greco is used as a model of, of someone doing that or adding heavy style to it and making your mark? on nature, uh, or is it something else, right? And so, what, you know, there's a profound uh, uh, core here that you'll want to look for as you go along. Um, and I do, again, encourage people to look to the grand lines of painting, the great stream, and look at the great paintings of all time. Not the great painters, but the individual paintings that have this thing, you know, I'm telling you, it's the, it's what you call it, the Holy Grail, the, 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 the golden thread, you know, uh, that weaves through uh, the, the best, right, and, and gives it a definition that whether we can put words to it or not, we're trying to live up to. 
Now, Degas is talking about, uh, in a couple different times, he talks about uh, realism. He says, at one point, he says that you're not done with your painting when you finish up dotting all the T's and crossing the I's. He said, that's just the field. That's the place, that's the field out of which art evolves. You could say the field, meaning literally the field, but he's saying it's the field, it's the, it's the playing field. And, uh, but so that's that so that's just the pure truth aspect of this is but uh, but he says there's a courage in launching a frontal attack upon the main structure and the main lines of nature and cowardice in approaching by facts and details art is really war now that's a little different and i'm saying this to the realists i um the that the mentality of the facts and the details way of working uh, and not preconceiving the beauty of the thing as a source, as a way to truth. Uh, I'm just using that, his quote here as a, it's not precisely what he's saying, but as a uh, conversation. Uh, but now I'm going to show you uh, a quote from Ang, and, um, and this makes more sense to me, uh, maybe more to the point, but um, somewhat begins to talk to you about how it happens, you know, how you actually get to that, to that quality of... Um, uh, that's underlying this thing that makes, shall we say, painting this other thing, which you can call art, if, I guess. So here's Ang talking. He says, when one knows his trade well, when one has learned well to imitate nature, what the good painter should think about most, now notice he's saying painter here, what the good painter should think about most in his, is his painting as a whole to have it all, so to speak, in his head before executing it, in order to then execute it with passion and as with a single purpose. Then I believe all seemed felt, conceived together. That's the proper mind of the great master, of the grand master, and that is what one must acquire about this art by forcing himself to dream about it day and night if one is to be born. So he's saying there's a thing that separates realism and just execution, which I think is, was behind a lot of that question of the painter versus the artist. But he's saying that there's absolutely something, that is that the involvement of passion, that is say of a, uh, to execute it with passion, the involvement of the soul, the, the inner man. And, uh, and of course that word love would come in, you know, that word, uh, that word that says response, yes response. So, um, uh, so that's a pretty significant one and uh, puts you in the mind of what might, you know, all you execute all day long, but if you don't have a sense of, if you don't have a sense of the overall beauty. And then, and then Cox goes on in a very interesting way, talking about then what happens. So to paint well, and this is more of the same, to paint well in any manner, one must know from the first touch what the result is to be, and one must place no touch on the canvas that is not a necessary step toward the attainment of this result. Every brush stroke that does not lead to the desired end leads away from it. Every particle of pigment that's not used is worse than wasted. It's obstructive. To paint well, technically, is to have profound knowledge both of the process and of the result desired. Is to have perfect foresight and perfect skill. Now, <laughs> foresight's not an adequate term, is it? I would like to use a word like vision, but you know, I can, in, 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 in in a visionary, uh, is to be both craftsman and artist. So you're getting here. You're getting those words, right? It's first of all to be a composer, a draftsman, a colorist, and then as a crowning grace, to be a technician, a master of one's tools. So which do you want? You know, I'm just suggesting in the question of artist versus painter, there isn't one. You don't really want to play that game. I'm saying forget it. You really need both. And so I think I may have, do I have one other interesting quote? Uh, it seems as though, <laughs> this is by Rothenstein, Men and Memories. He'd been talking about Sargent when he came to this quote. You'll notice in all three of these last quotes, there are dots sort of right in the middle, right, right in the middle of the quote, and those dots actually represent uh, a massive amount of words that I've removed to get to the, the end point. So it says, he's, it, uh, Cox, I mean, Rothenstein says, it seems as though the pursuit of a certain kind of artistry has lowered the standard of painting throughout Europe. Manet, Degas, and Fantin Latour had together 
with their artistic qualities and equipment and knowledge equal to those of the best of, of the best academic painters. So here we are talking about artistic qualities, right? And we're talking about painters and painting standards. This was not the case with Whistler, whose vision and impeccable taste replaced what he lacked of constructive power and virtuosity. And he's now talking about mechanical skill. And none of us, neither Steer nor Sickert nor Condor, had at his disposal, and remember this is a man living at the time of Sargent, had at his disposal the equipment which our older contemporaries carried with comfort and ease. In other words, they really knew their stuff. We all trusted vaguely to our artistic qualities to bring us up the mountaintop, up to the mountaintop. The critics, too, flouted us. <laughs> I praised them, not for our incompetence, but for our supposed eccentricity. McCall, the best of them, himself preferred suggestion to thoroughness, charm of color to solid construction. So far has this insensibility to incompetence gone that critics, nay, even some artists themselves, actually regard this as a sign of genius and have come to believe that impotence is the sign of creative ability. What, what could better describe our age, right, or the age that just precedes us? It's nice to have such a body of people, such as my listeners here, who want to turn this around for themselves, if not for, for their culture. Um, a strange paradox. Uh, let me read that last sentence again. So far has this insensibility to incompetence gone that critics, nay even some artists themselves, actually regard this as a sign of genius and have come to believe that impotence is the sign of creative ability, a strange paradox. Prophetic in truth, in truth was Hans Andersen's story of the king in his golden clothes. So, um, so you get the sense of where I'm coming from. And uh, so the, this would be the grand warning to the wise. You know, are you going to replace artistry in your artsiness and think that's elevate so high, but you're lacking all, lacking all sorts of other skills. Uh, and, um, uh, you know, and, and even even to the to the extent of disrespecting them, not you know disrespecting. You know, you see qualities, but you don't know what they are as a student, and you don't know what's missing. What you know, you keep wondering what in the world is missing. And I uh, just remember the the, the 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 gratitude I felt at the at the sheer numbers of things that I was doing that that my superiors, my teachers from the past, uh, you know, down at the arts like hadn't heard of that they weren't doing because they'd never heard the words, they'd never heard the ideas. Uh, so, uh, and it was evident in their work that they hadn't. So, um, that's one of those things, though. It's the, this, this whole thing, this mechanical structure, you know, I mean, the, you know, painting skills and all that sort of stuff, and this whole body of shop talk, this whole body of knowledge, which I'm trying to sort of begin to hand off, some of which I'm trying to hand off to you. So, all right. Um, well, that... That, Liz, I'm sure is not precisely what you want, but that's my take on the way to think about this stuff. That's the way I prefer to think about it myself, rather than to get into little wars between, uh, between the, um, the, you know, the, 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 especially between the world of, of these new practicing realists who are just doing the same thing we all were doing, is trying to figure out how to be better at their trade, you know, to be decidedly better. I remember Daniel Green saying to me once, he, had, he decided he, the best way to distinguish himself was to become a better draftsman than, 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 than his predecessors, to really dig in on, on drawing. Well, I think that's what a lot of these same guys are doing, but does that mean that in the end they're actually interested in something else? No, it just means that they, they themselves, you know, this is the old, uh, <laughs> uh, you, you have two eyes and you have to make sure you keep both of them well. <laughs> one is, one is, one is, one is mechanics and knowledge and all that sort of stuff. And the other one is, what are you here for? What's, what's the dance? So I won't say any more. Uh, great to, great, great to uh, have that uh, nice donation again, David uh, D. the <laughs> second. And, um, and thank you all uh, for attending to this one and see you again uh, in a few days. Oh, don't forget, by the way. Okay, this is me being bad. So don't forget to do the list. Subscribe, uh, share, uh, share like crazy, would you? And... Um, and um, <laughs> comment. Uh, the comments are really much needed to keep this, you know, to keep me in, in, to keep me aligned with what you're looking for, with what your needs are. So, all right. Uh, very best to you. See you in a bit.